You should be able to record while you're yes. sharing. So can everybody see the screen? Yes, thank you very much again for being here. So my field practicum is titled The Understanding the Impact of East Gainesville After School Science Club. And this is really a partnership and was made possible by Cultural Arts Coalition, which is my host organization, as you will see later on. Uh, so my field practicum uh, was interested in looking at why science and their how the Cultural Art Coalition is benefiting the community in teaching student science. And we understand that in one way or the other, uh, we have all utilized science in our lives. Uh, that's, this might be knowingly or unknowingly. And in this line, we find that the UNESCO uh, elaborates that science guarantees solutions for everybody, uh, everyday life and help us to answer the great mysteries of the universe. And so it is just, uh, it is one of the most important channels of knowledge that play specific role, and as well as a variety of functions that benefit this uh, society. Uh, when we take an example in creating new knowledge and improving education, and even increasing the quality of our lives, as you may see as it, uh, illustrated here, uh, we as researchers in the room, uh, most of us, we find that science helps us to satisfy our curiosity, which will often enable the creation of new knowledge and address the ever-growing um, societal issues, we, uh, which we may want to take an example of the COVID-19 pandemic, which really got everybody uh, around the globe uh, not prepared, but we've been able to manage the situation in various ways. And thereby, so uh, to this effect and many more, uh, in recent past, there has been growing a uh, push on the need just to improve on the science literacy among people, uh, regardless of whom, where, and what they, uh, they are. And so, and additionally, um, reducing the achievement gaps in science would mean a plus in the, uh, in the reduction or in the achievement of the sustainable development goal um, number four which is the quality for uh, quality education for all because science is a subject uh, being taught all over the world. And so if we reduce the achievement gap in science, we find that we are doing something um, uh, leading to the achievement of the sustainable agenda number four. So in this study, as we will see, science is based on the performance and attitude one has. And science has been associated also with the knowledge and the use of uh, the knowledge to identify questions, to acquire knowledge, to explain scientific phenomena, and just to draw evidence-based conclusions about science-related issues. And so if we have these, we are able to face the sustainable challenges. And so it is just prudent for everybody, the government, citizens, and whoever you are to understand the language of science and become scientifically literate. And on the other hand, um, uh, scientists should also just understand the problems of policymakers and that uh, they face and endeavor to make uh, these uh, most of their results to the to the research uh, in their research relevant and comprehensible in the society. So, under the context of my field practicum, my field practicum was done here in Gainesville, and um, which is uh, part of Alachua County. Uh, we can see that just as other counties in the United States, a lot of counties are diverse uh, county have been white as the majority population and the blacks as the largest minority group in a lot of county and specifically here in Gainesville. And so in terms of education, the minority uh, groups, especially the blacks, have fallen behind these um, other racial groups in terms of achievement. And so we find that these um, disparities in academic achievement are contributing and just perpetuating themselves in a lot of um, disadvantaging uh, problems, leading to problems in housing, transport, and employment among the minority groups, and especially the Blacks. So in a way, we understand that education is the backbone, um, or rather education has been associated as the backbone of development and the backbone of just evading this disadvantage uh, situation. And so if we address this, we are able to just 
help re reduce this vicious circle that the blacks and other minorities are, are, are forced into. So to help address these disparities in education, uh, there is a lot of there is this a larger county equity plan in education which seeks to do so using various approaches and so three that are so important in line with the work of cultural art coalition are these that aim at building capacity and creation of programs that emphasize on interest so as to improve the performance um, example of these programs are after school programs that recently have really gotten a much popularity among the globe and they're just attracting various organizations and so cultural arts coalition being one of the organizations so a need to just tap into this spectrum and help the students in the community to be science literate and um, uh, reduce the achievement gaps so how do they do those uh, do this so cultural art coalition came in to motivate teach and help students to improve um, at the performances, especially uh, in science. And this was uh, uh, located, uh, concentrated or rather in East Gainesville, where students are predominantly black with a history of low academic achievement. Uh, so a bit, uh, a little bit about Cultural Art Coalition. Uh, it is a nonprofit organization, which is located in Gainesville and it was incorporated as a nonprofit in uh, 1983. Um, it works in partnership with various entities. And so it does this to educate and empower the community um, by establishing and maintaining community oriented programs. And they do so you are using arts, culture and social awareness. Um, it has various programs such as the environmental ambassadors that teaches teens to program uh, protect the environment while uh, when they also gain job trainings and they also have the after school science club which is the which is what i was interested in here students are taught to be good stewards of the environment and also they are helped to improve on their performances so how uh, what really goes on in the after school science club so here learning takes place using various pedagogical strategies uh, and these, they, uh, these strategies allows students to engage, interact and have fun while learning uh, science. So student gets to do excursions and field trips in places such as the Han Museum, which is located um, here in Gainesville, where they get to learn various uh, topics in animals. They also engage in practical learning, um, such as gardening, as you can see in the, uh, in the slide. Uh, they also do, they're also exposed to scientific instruments and just scientific uh, practical, the use of science in the practical world. Uh, so what did I really want to do for my practicum? Uh, so the purpose of this practicum was really just to understand and help document the impact of Cultural Arts Coalition Science Club among the participants. Uh, to do this, I had three specific objectives that informed my research questions. And so first, I wanted to examine how science could affect students' attitude and perception towards science. And secondly, I wanted uh, to have an answer on the extent to which the after-school program affects science performances among the participants. And the finally, I also wanted to understand what factors really influence the attendance, participation, and the success of the after-school science club. Uh, I did uh, reach my objectives uh, through 29 phone interviews. So I conducted 29 phone interviews, and this was uh, uh, beginning May 15th, uh, running through August, uh, around uh, 15th of August. And um, I used a mixed approach whereby I focused really on the qualitative questions because the study really aimed at getting the lived experiences of participants in relation to the Cultural Arts Coalition Science Club. Um, we also had quantitative questions, which I really uh, used to help me understand the magnitude of the effects. And um, uh, through the fieldwork, I approached the fieldwork through an appreciative inquiry manner. So through the data analysis, I did qualitative analysis 
I will use content analysis of the narrative. And this was after I transcribed the raw data and grouped them according to the three research questions. Uh, additionally, I retrieved quotes from the, from the transcribed data that I used uh, that were supporting the various questions to uh, support the discussions that I was having. And this was because of the nature of the study, because we, um, because I depended on the knowledge and experiences of the participants, especially by word of mouth. Um, and also the quantitative data, uh, data was analyzed using measures of central tendency on Microsoft Excel and mode was the dominant uh, test that was, uh, was used. Um, as indicated in the, uh, uh, in the slides, I now discuss the results. So the after school program was instrumental in aiding the students to improve on the academic performance. So two thirds of the students are reported having an improved grade uh, score in their science performances, while a third of the participants who were students maintained on the performance uh, that they had had prior to joining the after school program. So as we will see later on into the results, the study suggested an existence of a positive relationship between performance and the attitude one has. So as represented in the, um, in the slide, uh, in the quote rather, our participants indicated having improved with more than a whole step above previous grade score. And something that we need to note that this was self-reported grade scores. I, was, I didn't have access to the uh, actual uh, grade scores. And so uh, I used parents and other participants, other group of participants like the teachers, just um, to help understand uh, or to um, tap into what the students had said. And I found that majority of the parents uh, also were in agreement with the self-reported uh, performances of the students. A uh, continuation of the results are linked to the first uh, research question. Uh, the study suggested that the after-school program not only benefited participants in terms of academic performance, but, it, but it's also in the mastery of science. So majority of the participants were in agreement with being availed with the opportunity to practice science. Uh, and as seen, most of the students indicated having been exposed to various activities and, and science concept. And this aided them in mastery of science, uh, scientific concept and practicing it thereafter, whereby we will see later on that some students indicating extending what they really had done in, in school and in class uh, during the after school program back at home. Uh, another thing was uh, linked to the increased awareness of STEM careers. So the study found out that two thirds of the students were now more than ever more aware of the STEM careers. And this is attributable to the exposure they got to the science practical aspects of learning. So as you can see in the quotes, uh, the concept was held not only by the, stu uh, by the student, but also by participants. Uh, by other participants who got the chance to interact uh, with students such as the volunteers and the cultural arts coalition staff. So um, to me, the fact that the students even indicated the willingness at, and urge to venture into science related careers, I saw this as a big win to the organization uh, considering what, uh, the main objectives of, of starting the after school program. And uh, something else uh, that I found so interesting Although I did not, uh, I did have a limited participants. I did get a chance to to talk to uh, to learn from a, uh, from one of the staffs about one student who is currently in high school and pursuing all science related courses at high, uh, in high school. And surprisingly, the, the, this student who graduated from the program is also a volunteer in one of the environmental ambassadors program in the organization, which also teaches, um, uses a scientific approach to, to uh, teach students. Uh, in terms of the second research question, uh, the creation of the, uh, as we may remember the creation of the Cultural Arts Coalition, uh, it was just guided by the motivation to teach science in a fun manner. And so this was really uh, to capture the attitude of students. And so 
uh, I found out that two thirds of the participants indicated that they had maintained their positive, at, uh, uh, positive attitude towards science, which they had had prior to joining the program. And um, for me, this is to mean that the organization helped to sustain the attitude among, this, among these uh, students. Um, however, the, the data suggested that program, the program could have also been benefiting other students to grow a positive perception towards science and also just to love it. And uh, this positive shift, I attributed it to the nature of the program because we are, what I got from the students and participants, uh, the program allowed the students to view and experience science in a relaxed and just learn it in a fun manner. Uh, get it, uh, this slide uh, helps me to have an example from the data collection instruments where I identified some learning experiences that help to understand the, the attitude of students and perception of students prior, prior uh, to joining the program. So as illustrated uh, here, we can see that there were differences in the aspect that uh, 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 experienced changes among the students. And we see that there was a big change in the knowledge of science among students. And just uh, an example is the interest in watching of the science programs. To me, this was really interesting because interesting to me. Uh, and this um, suggests that students were enjoying practicing and experiencing science around their spaces. And even they possibly were extending it away from school and away from the after school program. And we also see that student perceived level of difficulty in science really improved as, as two students were now more uh, now able to view science as an easier course, capable of having good performances uh, in it. And so this change, uh, this change in perception of difficulty suggests the importance to me, I attribute this to the importance of self-efficacy in redirecting a, uh, a performance of oneself. And it just suggests that programs should uh, hail on aspects that help to improve on aspects to do with self-efficacy. So how did, that, how did uh, science attitude or attitude in science manifest itself? So the positive change in the student's attitude, um, this was observed in various domains of the student's life and such as increased participation and engagement in learning activities. Um, the concept was hailed with uh, volunteers at the club and teachers where the students were uh, uh, attended the, uh, the school. For example, um, a parent reported having received positive feedback from the, uh, from the school that he, uh, his, sons, his son attend, whereby the teacher was stating the level of improved attendance and participation in school and the learning activities after some, uh, some time in the program. And just Although there could have been other factors that contributed to this, I believe that there was, uh, there was a positive relationship uh, that could have been streaming from the students' participation in, this, uh, students' change in participation and attendance in the after-school program and the change in behavior at school. Um, and to the third research question, uh, there were various factors that the study suggested had an influence on attendance, participation, and the success of the after-school club. So one that dominated the conversation was around the program quality dimensions. And these were the supportive, fun, interactive, engaging, and the safe environment that the after-school science club provided uh, to the students. Uh, so these various characteristics of the club really just motivated attendance of the club and enhanced learning of science to take place. For example, um, these are the pedagogical strategies, uh, strategies such as the hands-on activities in, in topics such as the food web, which was one that they were doing, coloring. So this was mixing of colors to develop a color and gardening um, that volunteers really used. Um, it really captured students' interest and attention because students really, were not lectured. Uh, uh, they didn't go to, uh, to the program to be lectured or rather they went into practice. So the hands-on activities that they got uh, to engage in really motivated and got them interested to continue coming to the program and just uh, do well. 
Uh, looking at an example of how the program quality uh, contributed to the attendance and success of the after school program, I found out that uh, the Gainesville Community Education Institutes, such as the University of Florida and Santa Fe, really, really provided uh, a lot of um, um, help to the, to the organization. We found that half of the volunteers uh, that instructed the students in the after school program really came from these two institutions. And uh, the volunteers really supported and provided students with um, a good environment to learn because they, they gave them sufficient opportunities to practice science. And even with, uh, with the problem of resource uh, constraints, they were able to provide uh, materials for them to be utilized in the, in the session. So which gave the students uh, practical experience and for them to be engaged in learning science during an out of school time. Um, uh, the coalition or the after school program, I found it had a few challenges and one that really was dominating that, that conversation was uh, in terms of resource constraints and communication. So in terms of communication, a few volunteers, few of the volunteers uh, that had no background in education or academic syllabus in the United States or in a larger county, they had a, a difficulty in just structuring their, their materials to suit students' um, topics that they were learning in school. But with time, uh, some, of this, uh, some of the volunteers who had uh, uh, experience, some of them because were retired teachers, they indicated that them they had a, um, they were flexible and they were able to manage the, 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 uh, the lack of communication between the teachers in the traditional schools where the students attend and the volunteers. So they were able to, to, to manage that because of them being uh, teachers. But those that were not teachers had a difficulty. And also the resource constraints um, made it difficult for the, for the organization because it depended on the volunteers to come with their own resources and some students indicated that they would have loved if learning was taken in, in groups, in taking place in groups. And so if they had more materials, then it could have been a reduced share of, um, a reduced ratio of sharing the, the, the materials. Um, in conclusion, one thing that I'd like, one concluding lesson rather that I got from this study was the importance of enhancing a program quality dimension. For example, um, uh, the interactive, fun, safe, supportive, and in, uh, engaging environment that the program really provided, I, um, this really enabled or maximized the positive benefits that the academic after school program uh, provides to the student. And so for me, it is a prudent or it is important for programs such as this just to tap, to, to uphold or to to take consideration into the program dimension and the qualities of the program so that just to capture the interest because we understand that this is an out, this is out of school students are already tired from school and so if we give them an opportunity to to have fun while learning then this will really be important to them and we will we will be able to maximize on the positive uh, impact that we, that we get um uh in this regard uh, understanding that one of the major challenges was resource constraints, I suggest that diversification in the stakeholder involvement in the program. So for, uh, for example, uh, parents are a great resource to be tapped. For example, in offering advisory services, financial and even tutorial services, they could be able to be the volunteers themselves in this uh, program. Because few of the parents that I, uh, that I talked to indicated the willingness to to participate in the running of the program, but they had not gotten the opportunity to do so. And so they can also just volunteer in terms of helping to take the students in excursions, in, uh, in, in uh, field work, um, which is just something most people are uh, given the time and opportunity they're able to uh, participate in. Uh, one other thing that really got students annoyed or not happy was the fact that when they approach fifth grade, they have to graduate from the after-school program. So 
I would suggest that if we are able to increase the resources, if the after school program is able to uh, increase on their resources, then we are able to increase the age gap eligibility for the students to continue to be in the uh, science club. So as just to maximize on the benefits that they get from being in this program. Uh, finally, my program had a few limitations that I had to manage with one that cannot go and mention the impact that the COVID-19 pandemic had, just as many researchers and studies, I had to relocate my thoughts and think of the changes to be made so that just to achieve the uh, initial objectives that I had hoped to handle. And so the data collection was made difficult, a little bit challenging, and uh, say that, and also it resulted to a low participation uh, because of reaching, it was difficult reaching students um, because I had to do so using the parents and most of the times the parents were in conflicting places with the students during the afternoon because it's not, it's, I didn't find it well for me to call parents at night to allow me to talk to the students and so the ones that I got to talk to in the afternoon I had to manage with them but still I will ha I'll have to say thank you to everybody who participated in the study and especially the parents who really, as participants rather, and especially the parents who really trusted me to talk to their children at the weird time that I had to talk to them. So I'll just like to say thank you to everybody who is here listening to me. Uh, taking time out of your busy schedule. Thank you for being here. And it cannot go unmentioned, um, giving my thanks to Cultural Art Coalition for the opportunity, uh, to the Center of Latin American Studies. Thank you for the funding to the study. And of course, the Center of African Studies. I cannot say my appreciation is beyond. It's only God who can know my appreciation because for funding my program from first year to now, I really thank the, uh, the center and also the outreach program under the Africa uh, Center of African Studies under Dr. Leslie, thank you so much for that. And to the University of Florida, I thank you for the opportunity and the sustainable uh, Masters of Sustainable Development uh, practice family. Thank you so much, starting from Dr. Galloway, Dr. Norris, the uh, three cohorts that I've interacted with, cohort nine, 10 and 11. Thank you so much for friends and my family who are here and back at home. I really thank you so much. And can just not forget to say thank you to God because for good health up to now, the courage and the strength to be here. And thank you very much everybody for being here. That's it for me. Thank you so, so much, Andrea, for this uh, very comprehensive